be inviting you to turn to Hebrew in chapter 11. While you are doing that, I see my good friend, Elder Danny, has turned up in his Jamaican colors, part of it. So in um, Hebrew 1 to 3 and 23 to 29, and I will be sharing with us Hebrew 11 and 29 to I read. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were made of things which do appear. I take you to the 23rd verse. The 23rd verse, and we, here we go. By faith Moses, when he was born, was eight three months of his parents because they saw he was a proper child. And they were not afraid of the king's commandment. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ's greater riches than the treasures in Egypt for he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith, he kept the pass over, and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. This is a portion of God's word. We take the time to just say amen for his word. I'm going to ask you to stand with me, as I usually do before I share a word. And to ask us where we are, just to raise our hand towards the heaven as we commit the rest of this service in his hand. And so, Father God, we give you praise and give you thanks that you allow us to be here today. Some persons went to bed last night and did not make it. Some yesterday were alive, today they are not. We don't take for granted the fact that you have caused us to be alive. So as we come to worship you, we pray, Lord, for strengthening of the believers, that you would encourage our hearts. For those who are amongst us who don't know you, we pray, Almighty God, that the experience will be one that at the end of the service, somebody will come to become a part of the Christian faith. And just in case there are any amongst us who have drifted, they might be moved today to come back. So bless your word. We pray to our hearts. And be pleased to glorify your name. It is in your name we pray. And God's people say, Amen. God's people say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Today, I want to share with us around a, some people call it a subject, some call it a theme, some call it a topic. Moses, one of the great heroes of the Bible, that's what I'll be speaking of. Moses, 
one of the great heroes of the Bible. Today is acknowledged, recognized in Jamaica as what is called Heritage Sunday. Tomorrow will be celebrated as a National Heroes Day. Just to let you know that maybe in this congregation there are some of you who might have got your OD. Any OD? Some of you might have got your... Is that an OD there? Oh, is that a fan? Okay, I, I, I thought I saw you put your hand up. All right, our OM. And there are persons across our nation who, because of the work they have done, whether it's in education, whether it's in the medical field, whether it's in the religious order, um, in the social sphere, in politics, in the military and others, will be getting awards. The truth of the matter, sometimes there are persons who have worked hard in communities. They have worked hard in some rural areas. Persons who have gone unnoticed, who even deserve the OD and the OD, OM more than those who got it. Am I right? And so today, as I come to you, I come to you realizing that as a nation, we have had seven heroes. If I were to ask you to name me the seven heroes, I, I, I am sure that all of you would. In truth and in fact, there are six who are male and one female. And there are persons who have indicated we have six hero and one heroine. Um, but we have seven um, heroes. One might ask, what does one do, or what are some of the characteristics of a hero? One, person should be courageous. Two, person should stand up for justice, equality, and human rights. Person should be able to inspire others through their leadership. And uh, a person should be committed and have what I call strong determination. I mean, you are not a quitter. You will not quit because things get a little rough. Persons must have integrity and live up to what I call high moral standard or principles. And if I could add another one, although there are others, the person should be self-serving instead of self-seeking. Um, there are some people who are always seeking for themselves, but should be somebody who is always seeking to serve others. Uh, having said that, I, I, I want to turn to what I call some eras of the Bible. In the book of Hebrew, in chapter 11, some persons call it the um, Hall of Fame. Some call it the Hall of Faith. All right? But within that, and the definitions I have given to you, the characteristic, there appear some eras. Could I indicate some of the eras that surface in the Bible. Among those eras that surface, you would never believe that one of them was a prostitute. Ireland, her name, you know her name. What's her name? Rhea. Rhea of the Ireland. She was the one who um, saved the, those who went uh, despised and there was a promise that was made and out of it she was saved but and so I have sought to record some of the names of persons I, I think of Noah Noah who built an ark when there was no sign of rain and preach and told the people that they should be prepared. And then there is Abram. 
Abraham who would have who offered his son as a sacrifice. You know the story very well. Oh, he took his young son and uh, went up and caused him to carry the, the wood and uh, strapped him down on the altar and was about to kill him when God allowed a lamb uh, uh, to just appear. So God knew the intent of his heart. So although he did not actually sacrifice him, kill him, the intention of his heart was of such. And then there is uh, Joseph. We all know about Joseph. Joseph is that man who was sold into slavery by his brothers. Because there are more than one Joseph in the Bible. So I want to identify the Josephs I'm talking about. Because there is Joseph who was the father of Jesus. Not biological. Uh, he was the adopted father of Jesus. And by the way, you know, there are a lot of fathers. Um, Godfather, stepfather, all of that. But in the Bible, one of the heroes that's really stand out tall is a man by the name of Moses. Why Moses? We read it a while ago. And I'm going to share some things with you about this Moses. Why he has surfaced of one of the key eras of the Bible. Just to let you know that in Exodus, you'll find it. That in Exodus 2, it tells you of the birth of uh, Moses, but in Deuteronomy, towards the very end, it tells you about the death of Moses. So if one was going to talk about Moses, you would need, or if you want to do an in-depth study on Moses, it would take a couple months. Why? Because the life of Moses is in Exodus. Which book follows Exodus? Let me see. Eh? Leviticus, and after that is what? Numbers, and after that is what? So there are four books that speak to Moses. And if there are four books that speak to him, it would take, because it is in Deuteronomy, at the last chapter, you find the death of Moses. And then you go into that book where the person would take over for him. And what book is that? Joshua. So I will have to give what is called, what I call a brief on this man Moses and to share what I call three biblical truths with us. For those of you who have heard me, you'll hear me talk about biblical truths from the standpoint, if you know the truth, the truth will do what? It set you free. So I try to unearth what is called the biblical truth in the word of God and today I want to do that. And so, but before doing what we read in Hebrew, I must give you a little background or waiver of Moses. Moses was born in Egypt. And he was, he was born at a time when the children of Israel were under tremendous pressure. He was born at a time when much was expected of the Israelite. They have to make, as it were, block out of straw and they had to work hard. They had to work overtime. And there was a Pharaoh that rose up that did not know Joseph. And he decided he was going to work the children of Israel hard. And as he worked them hard, something happened in that land. They found that the Israelite, the children of Israel, 
were having more children than the children of the Egyptian. So they came up with a plan. And you all would have heard about the plan. One of the reasons why they decided to come up with the plan is because they said, after a while, the children of Israel is going to outnumber the Egyptians. And if they outnumber the Egyptians, one day they're going to rise up and take over the country. Just like right now in a certain country, um, there are persons that get rid of the illegal immigrants. They get them out. But here is what happened. They devised a plan that when an Israelite woman got pregnant and was to give birth, they should kill the male and save the female. It's a long time our men have been under pressure. <laughs> it's a long time that our female was treated nicely. And they must be treated nicely. So the plan to the midwives, kill the males and save the girls. And it's in that time that Moses was born. When Moses was born, and this is a background, then I go into the three biblical truths. It's important for you to digest what I've just said. When he was born, his parents, his mother, saw him as a good boy. You know, it is interesting that from birth you can identify that child going to be a good child. Am I right? <laughs> You know, you find it in really Exodus, you know, in Exodus 2, you find it. He, 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 he saw him as going to be a good boy. And so therefore, what she did, what they did, is that they took him in the home for three months. For three months, they ate the, the boy. And after three months, when a child becomes three months, you know, it's a different story. The mothers will tell you that. Maybe he was making a lot of noise now. So it would be hard to hide him any longer. And so they decided they would make a little basket. Put it on the river in order to save him. And this is where we go. I read it. And when she could no longer hide him. That's in 2, 3. She took him. And an ark of bulrushes and daub it with slime and with pitch and put the child therein and laid it in the flag by the river brink. God is an amazing God. Anybody hear what I'm just saying? He's an amazing God. And what God's caused to happen because this youngster was going to surface to be the leader of, of, of the that would take the children of Israel out of Egypt. So he had to be spared because God had a plan for him. Can I say to us, all of us who are here, that God has a plan for us. Every one of us, little ones, big ones, he has a plan for us. And so what happened? As the Bible said, um, the sister was sent to watch. And on a day when the daughter of Pharaoh came to, to bed, because those times they did not have all these kind of modern bathrooms. Am, am I right, Elder? They have the modern bathroom. You know the modern bathroom now. Most persons now are moving out there. The bathtub, bathroom, you know the bathtub? And they're now putting in Sister Brown. They're putting in the um, shower. Eh? Shower compartment. And they're moving out those old time um, uh, shower head and putting in the modern one, man. He said, We are in a modern day, we are a modern age. They didn't have that then. 
So she went. Is it Pharaoh's daughter went to bathe at the river. And his servants came with her. But guess what? God allowed the princess to go by and get her servants to open the thing. And when she saw the young boy, she fell in love with him. And decided, I want this boy as my son. Can you imagine that? But that is not, that is good. But there's another place to it. The little girl, his sister came and he said, uh, do you want, a, you want a nurse? He said, yes. And uh, she went for her mother to be the nurse. Can you imagine that the mother was getting paid to take care of her own daughter? God is a miracle working God. I feel like shouting hallelujah. God set the thing up, you know, set it up. And you know why? What happened is that he was a Hebrew boy. And so he was trained. And while he was being trained by the mother, the mother spoke to him as he get older about the fact where they are coming from. Talk about the God that they serve. Spoke about this God that provides and promises that he will take care of his own. And this is where now we turn to the three biblical truths. Because having gone back, been trained by his mother, yet the princess did not know that the child was being trained by the child's mother. She isn't God. Isn't God? God is a God is an amazing God. Amazing God. So the mother was able to get back in her son to love him, to teach him, you know, to protect him. And now there came a time where he had to send him to the palace. And the palace another training took place, but it's a different kind of training. And as the youngster so, what was happening? He took a decision. And we go now to, I give you a background. And I won't be long with the others. Because what happened is that when he got to an age where he thought, I can make my own decision. He said he did not want to be called the son of the princess. Can you imagine that? He refused to be called the son of the princess. So let us read it. You really find that in verse 24 of 11. In 24 of 11, he said something like this. By faith, Moses, when he was come to, to what we call age of he can make his own decision, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. What would that mean by that decision that he had taken? What it means is bear in mind that he is now in the palace. He is the son of, of the daughter of Pharaoh. Therefore, is the grandson of Pharaoh, the one who runs the thing. So, being in the palace, it means that he had a place, proper place to live. He was well fed. He had persons who would take care of him. I have no doubt the little boy got a ride in the chariots too. He had power. He, now that he had got bigger, because he's now the grandson of Pharaoh, he, he had some prestige. And he decided he was going to refuse what I call the privileged lifestyle. That's the first thing I leave with us. That he refused by saying he did not want to be Call the son of the princess. He was now about to refuse the, 
what I call the privileged, privileged lifestyle. Because living in the palace, he would have a good connection. He would be, have comfortable living arrangement. He would have power, prestige. He was, he was one of those who were among what you call the elites. And then he decided he did not, was refusing. So by doing that, he was going to be in a situation where he would have to make some adjustment. Am I right? Because of refusing, my brothers, ladies and gentlemen, you might ask, why did he refuse? He saw injustice being done to the people around him from the palace. He heard the discussions that took place in the hierarchy. And he realized that the people that they were destroying and hurting were who? Were his people, the Israelites. And so he realized if he stayed in the palace, what would happen? If you stay among those who are making the plans and doing the things that are wrong, after a while, you're going to find yourself doing the same thing. Am I right? And so he decided, I don't want that. I want to see the people have a better life. And the Bible says, having decided to refuse, refuse to be the son of the princess. Verse 25, 26, give us another story. If you have it, you can put it there. What does it say? He, he, he said, listen, I'd rather be in the among the people of God. Oh, I love that. I love that. That he now was going to move from where he was. And he, by doing that, in verse 25, hear what he say? He was choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. In other words, in the palace, this youngster would have been good. Everything was set for him. But he saw things that was not right. He, it was injustice being done. And he said, I'd rather to be with the people of God. Although I might suffer. How many of us would have taken that position? Can I ask it again? Or maybe I would say across Jamaica, if persons were in that position, it would be very hard for them to give up the position to go and suffer. But he did that. He did it because he wanted to see a change. My brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I want to say that those of us who have become a part of the family of God, the decision we take to move out of the life of sin and out of the hand of, of Satan, it has brought with us what I call, yes, there are those moments where we go through struggle, but guess what? The God who have called us, he will protect us. He will provide for us. He will be there for us. He will be there in the good times and the bad times. And I shout hallelujah for that. Refuse. And if there is a time as we talk about Heritage Sunday, as we talk about evil, if there is a time when there must be people of honesty and people of justice and people of integrity, and I throw no stone, all I'm saying is that for one to be a hero, they have to live up to a certain standard. But I thank God that the normal standard set for normal men, those of us who are Christians, have to live at a higher standard. We have to live by the word of God and what the word of God says. So here we are today on this heritage day. And on Thursday, Excelsior College and the Earl Rattery Evangelistic Association will be teaming up to do what is called a heritage day. Looking at the 
heritage of our nation, the Christian heritage, the music heritage, the sport heritage. Uh, Brother David, I have watched you and I've seen you. Television live and direct. And I've heard you come with some ideas. And, but listen. We must, as a Christian community, pause to remind the country that if it was not for the Christians who fought against slavery, we would possibly might have still be in some kind of slavery. It is the Christians that fought for this, what I call, against slavery. And not only that, it's because the Christians fought for slavery and was for education that we have a strong heritage through the Christian for education in this country. Hence we have an Excelsior. Hence we have an Arden. Hence we have a Merle Grove. Hence we have a Calabar. Hence we have a St. Hughes. These are churches own. Hence we have a KC. A George's. Anybody following me? Hence you have a Glenmuir High School that I went. Uh, as an Anglican High School. Uh, you have a Westwood. You have a Moravian College called what? Bethlehem. You, you, you have what? Church, teachers, college. What I'm saying is that the, on this heritage Sunday, Jamaica must never forget. And uh, we must be reminded that is the church that have played a critical role in this country. And have caused education to be with it. And we should applaud the church for what it has done in this nation. And I could call some more church schools. Am I right? And schools, not only that, but churches have put basic schools, not just high schools. And our pastors and others are, are chairman of, of primary schools. And I say at a time when there is a thing in our school where you see videos going around. Have you seen some of the videos? Have you seen some of the fights? Uh, have you seen it? The church have to be more adopting school. There are some schools we have to adopt, you know. They may not be church school, but they are near to us. And we have to say, as a church, we're going to take you over. <laughs> we're, not, we're not going to seize the, church, the schools, but we have to provide a level of, of moral um, support to the school. But I want you to note this. I want you to note this. That the church must also be reminded on this earth it's Sunday that we must train up a child in the way he should grow. It is good to have education. Get me right. Send them to school, prep, high school, university. But in the midst of that, instill the word of God in them. The Chinese or the Japanese say, give me a child for seven years. And at the end of the seven years, take that child back. And it's hard to take out of that child what we have put into them. So too, we must realize those children that are out there, we have to find a way of sharing the good news to them. Let me move to the third thing. So the first thing I talk about, that he rejected. He rejected the the prestige, the lifestyle. It must have been difficult. Because you have your own room. You have your own helpers. You're getting good food. You have persons to carry you where you want to go. It's not like on the road these days, you know. There are some children that are trying to make a living for themselves and they're wiping windshield. Have you seen them? And they're selling some sweet. I try to give from the time, but I do it in a manner. I ask them, how oh, old you are? They said they are 14. I said, 14 times 6 is what? They said, oh, 
240. Boys who are 14. Boys who are 12. They don't know their timetable. Anybody hear what I'm saying? Some of them. So we, we, we have a group of persons now growing up. And so the indiscipline of surface in our society. The church. The church. And that's why I call people who are not Christians into the Christian church. So that they can now become a part of the group and the ambassadors who will help to make a difference in our world. Let me move to the third and last thing I want to share with you. Because having gone out there, he realized that in verse 29 of that same passage, in that verse 29, and I want to read it. In 29, by faith, he, was, he was forsook Egypt, for he had respect for the recompense of the reward. And by, by not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. That's in verse 27. And then in verse 28, through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. And 29 said, by faith, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land. When the Egyptians assayed to do so, they were drowned. What does it mean, my brothers and sisters? Is that God is calling for persons to come to be a part of his ambassador. To come out of a system that causes fear. A system where you are not completely happy. Man, you know, is on a search. Man is on a search for happiness, for peace, for contentment of, of mind, for joy. And there are those who feel to get that. Then you have to have a lot of material things. Well, guess what? If the material things was what is important, Moses would not have left it. He had it. It is, do I say it again? If it was the material things that was the all important. He, he was enjoy, he was there. But there was not the satisfaction. There was not the peace. There was not the joy. And there are many persons today. They are walking around. And outside they look good. They wear nice clothes. They talk good. But they are going through in their heart. They are paining. They are hurting. They are wanting a better life than what they, you see. I heard about a youngster from, he, not certain the detail of it. One of those top entertainers in America. From the third floor he dropped. He's dead. I, 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 we have, I've read about a number of persons with a lot of millions of dollars. Singers. And they have passed on. There's one with died out of drugs. Daughter came and have drugs. Millions of dollars. I said to myself, I wish I knew them that I could ask them to give. Get at least some of it. Especially like how you're on the expansion. And when you get some, you give ERA. So. It's like the man, you know. It's like the man, two men. And they, um, they had to wish. Each of them could wish what they want. One man wished that he wished that they were, he could get about a fifty million dollar. The other man wished that when he get it, he give him some. <laughs> he could wish for a hundred million, don't it? <laughs> but he wished that when the man get it, he give him some of it. Uh, some persons, my brothers and sisters, are at a point where they, we have to help them. We have to give them hope. But you know, as I close, although Moses was one of the great heroes because he's the one that brought the children of Israel out of 
Egypt out of bondage, didn't he? I told you that God had a plan for him. I, I told you that although he was supposed to die, through the plan that they had to kill the boys, I told you that although he went and uh, went on a river, God set it up. Yeah, that the that princess came and took him and trained him. And now God wanted a man to deliver the children of Israel. Who did God call? A Moses. And Moses delivered the children of Israel. They went on dry land. And the children of Egypt came after them. And the God who provides and protects his own. He allowed the children of Israel to cross over and dry land on the other side. And those who came after them, he destroyed them. Oh, I shout hallelujah for that, you know. God is always watching out for us. That's why at the age of 12, 13, 13, when I was at Glenmuir High School, I surrendered my life to Christ. And I'm now 71. Did I not have my struggles and my... Of course I did. But guess what? I'm still here. Because God saves. He keeps. And he's still satisfied. Anybody can identify that? Can lift your hand and shout a hallelujah. <laughs> and that's what we want for people. That's what we want. And so next week I'll be four nights in the city preaching. Why am I doing it? Because there are persons who are in darkness. And we need to get them into the light. I praise God for those of you already in the light and have come out of darkness. But there are still some who are in darkness. And we have to invite them into their light. This morning in the service I went. This person came to surrender their life. One lady was just crying away. Crying away. Popular lady. Was just crying away. Because although you might have, and the outside people think you are okay, on the inside, you know what's happening. So I'm going to do two things. I'm going to give an opportunity. Those of you online, those of you are in chapel, and you have not yet become a part of the family of God, we, the Christian, have a rich heritage. And we want you to be a part of that rich heritage. Because although Moses was a great hero, the greatest of all the heroes, you know who he is, is Jesus. He came into the world to set captives free. He has the power to save. He has the power to give salvation and to give restoration. And he has the power to help us in our time of struggle. It's my hope today. That this which I've shared with you it will help to encourage the believer to keep on going on. And those who have not yet come in will cause you to come in. By God's grace, young people, I see you singing up there. And I say, God, I'm excited about the, the, the young people singing for Christ. All is not lost. And elders and deacons and older ones, we have a tremendous responsibility. It is in our hand. And we have to help those who are in need. I'm going to ask us to pause with me. To pause with me. For a moment, I talk about Moses, the great hero. I told you about some things about heroes. But there's a thing that I didn't take long to speak on. It comes out of the passage, Hebrew 11, 1 to 3. It talks about faith. It talks about faith. That we exercise our faith in God. God will be moved by our faith and respond to our faith. Over these years that I've been preaching, over 40 plus years across this nation, Jamaica, the Caribbean, and other countries, I have seen persons of different walk of life deciding to make a change in their life. And oh, what a joy it has been when you hear them tell you about how they are enjoying the Christian life, and although they have challenged from time to time, they are able to face it. 
Because God has given them the capacity to face it. So bow your heads with me a little. Those of you, if anyone is here this morning and you say, I'm not a Christian. I want to pray for you where you are. You just have to just stretch your hand up. And I would want to commit you to Christ. If you're in the house, you might be a backslider. First of all, anywhere I go, I ask persons. Because you see, when I leave here today, there's no guarantee that you might be alive next month. And because it is what you do now will determine what will happen, I give you the opportunity. So if anyone is there like that, you're not a Christian, just raise your hand. I'll pray over you, pray for you. If you once walked with him and you have drifted, I want to do the same. And then I wonder as I pray, I talk about the God who will redeem, who will deliver his people. And if you're here this morning and you say, um, I am in need of a special prayer. It might be somebody is sick in the family. Maybe you yourself. Maybe you're saying I'm having some situation in my family life. And I want to be prayed for. I'm having something happening in my own body. I want to be prayed for. Or you're saying that at work. Or among your colleague, your friend. If you are saying, yes, I need that special prayer. Just raise your hand where you are. And I want to pray with you. Pray for you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to pray for you right where you are. I won't call you to, I won't ask you to come up today. But if you are there and uh, you are in need of a special prayer. I'm going to actually just stand right where you are, and then I'm going to pray. God answers prayer in the morning. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer in the evening. So keep your hearts in tune. Let's sing it again. God answers prayer. God answers prayer at noon. God answers prayer evening. So keep us in. There's a little part that says, Jesus may come in the morning. Jesus may come at noon. Jesus may come. So keep your hearts in. One more time, God answers prayer as we get to pray. God answers. And if there's anyone else, maybe you're going through a struggle. Maybe you want to stand for a friend who you know is in need of prayer. Maybe there's a family member somewhere that you are concerned about and you say, I want to stand for that person in proxy. Let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. Father God, standing across this chapel are persons who are standing for various reasons. There are some that might be sick in body and they need your healing touch. We pray, Almighty God, you the one that opened the Red Sea, indicating you have the power. But God repeated in the Bible, in the New Testament, we see many who have experienced your healing touch. And so today, in the name of Jesus, we pray for such ones. They might be standing here or might be standing for somebody. Maybe in their heart they are praying a prayer to you. 
we ask you, Lord, to answer their prayer. We praise you that you are not only a prayer hearing God, but you are a prayer answering God. We pray for those who, Lord, might be going through some struggle moments. They have been crying out to you, calling to you, but they are not seeing the results. We pray, Almighty God, that as the days and the months and the weeks ahead, they will start to experience, experience you. And Lord, we thank you for this church and for what you have caused them to do over the years and the plans that they have. Especially for our young people, I pray over their lives. Lord, and whatever the issue is that person are standing for, and finance, health, relationship, their family, their friend, whatever it is, God, we ask that you will come by and you will do what man can't do. We pray for each person in this building and everyone who is online. Lord, we pray on this Heritage Sunday that indeed they will acknowledge the goodness of God and that because of the Christian community, our world, our country is a better place. So Lord, we continue to lift up the leaders of our churches across the nation. And we ask you to give them wisdom and guidance. And so Lord, we just tell you thanks again for the opportunity we have to have worshipped you in this fashion. And we want to be mighty careful to give you all the praise and all the glory because all the praise and the glory belong to you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And God's people say, and God's people say, God's people say, Amen. Just a reminder as I hand over is that Moses refused the luxury or the living, the prestigious living in order to be a part of the people of God. And what a joy it is to have fellowship with God's people. And the words say, in his presence, there is still fullness of joy. God bless you. Everyone just say the truth.